In this video, I'll be introducing LabCal, which is an add-on module to the WIMS, and it is integrated into WIMS, and it allows you to do simple uh, sample scheduling, sample tracking. In a way, it's a mini LIMS, but it doesn't have all the features of a full-blown LIMS. So here I am in my main dashboard, logged in, and I'm going to go ahead and click on my LabCal uh, shortcut that I've set up for to launch LabCal. So when you start LabCal, what it does is it comes up with a laboratory calendar, thus the name, that shows the samples that you have scheduled and when they are due. So today is 11-11-2016, uh, so it shows that I have an effluent sample due, and the tests or analytes that I need to run are my 5-day BOD and my TSS on that particular sample. If I look at yesterday, it, it is in yellow because it hasn't been marked as received yet, so it's telling you that this is late one day if you haven't taken it or you haven't done the work yet, and the red sample is more than one day late. So the colors indicate what's happening. Here we see this sample has been received. It means you've said who sampled it and when it was actually sampled. However, no results have been entered. And then another state is it's been received, and all the results have been analyzed, so this purple color means that it's been analyzed and it's ready to be closed. A gray color, back in history here, we should have some of those, run here. This sample has been fully entered and has been marked as closed, which means the data is in the database and it's all good. So that's the kind of life cycle of a sample. It goes from scheduled to received to analyzed and then you close that sample out. Now as you enter results into LabCal, those results go into variables in the WIMS database. So let's take you through the setup of, of a sample, how to, how to set up the test for it, the methods, how, and how to schedule a sample and link it to your WIMS variables. So I need to set it up, so I'm going to go to set up. There's several sections here that I can do, but I'm going to start with methods. So right here I get the list of the methods that I run in my lab. And I can scroll through them and see what I got. And what I'm looking for is if I go to browse, I'm looking for uh, method 200.7, my metals. And in here I don't see it, so I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. And I'm going to add that method from the library. I could also just click new and just type it in, but I'm going to see if it's in my library here to pick from. So here, setting it up, I've got a list of all the methods that I have or that are available to me, and then on the right, the methods that are already in the database. So I'm just going to scroll down to EPA 200.7, right here, metals, and I'm going to bring it over, and I'm going to save and close. Now I could add more of these methods right here, but at this time that's all I need to do. Now if I go to Browse, I got the 200.7 method, and it's entered in. I say this is an analysis method, and I can type in right here my uh, standard operating procedure for that method. In this case, uh, we're not going to do that just for time considerations. So I go ahead and save my method, and now I'm ready to make sure that I have the test that I'm going to run with this particular sample. So I go into tests, and I'm going to run metals, which is arsenic, um, cadmium, chromium, copper, all that series of tests that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and click Browse and, and verify which ones I have. So I do have arsenic and I have cadmium, I have mercury, but I also need chromium, copper, lead, silver, and zinc. So again, I'm going to go see if those things are available in the library. I'm going to go ahead and click Add and I want to do chromium. So I put that in my quick filter, and the test that I'm doing here is uh, total, total chromium. So I bring that one over, then I go in here. Let's go to copper. Doing total copper. I double click to bring it over. I need to get lead. Total lead, double click on it. Nickel. And silver. And zinc. And then I'll be done. 
So I add those tests in. So I'm saying the lab can do it. And now when I set up samples, I'll be able to do it. Now I may want to give a shorter name to them. Like in this case, I don't need, as far as the name goes, the word total there, because I know that's the only test I run. And it makes it just a little shorter when you're displaying it in reports, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and fix these up. And there's my last one, zinc. So I click save and close. And now I'm ready to schedule my sample. So I'm going to go to setup and samples. It comes in and it shows me uh, I've got this effluent sample already set up that has my BOD and TSS. That's the one you see. And you can see the schedule here. Not quite fully displayed, but it says it's on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it's on the weekdays. But in this case, I'm going to set up my new sample called Effluent Metals. So I'm going to go ahead and click New. Type in Effluent Metals. Give it a description, my monthly metals sample. I choose a location. So this is from my WIM setup. What location is it going to be pulled from? I go ahead and choose Effluent. And I am going to say this is a composite sample type. I usually collect it at 8 a.m. Uh, sample size, you can fill in with whatever you want. And in this case, there is no client. So now I'm going to go ahead and add tests in. So what this does is, and I'm going to go ahead and check this auto sense variables, which we'll cover in a minute. So I go to add tests, and in this particular sample, I need to do arsenic. And I control click on each one that I need to do. Those are the samples. Those are the tests I need to run. And now it comes up and it says, OK, what schedule do you want? And I'm going to start my schedule in November. And I want to do it monthly. So I can schedule it in any of these patterns. OK, so in this case, I'm going to choose monthly. And I want to do it the second, let's say, Tuesday of every month. So that's the day I want it scheduled on. I can also, if I had to do two a month, I can schedule this. I could save the schedule and say, do the fourth Tuesday of every month or the third Tuesday of every month. So you can build the schedules up to get the sample in. But in this case, I want to just do it once a month, uh, the second Tuesday of every month. I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Close. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to click Save Schedule and then Save and Close. And what it does is it finds, it will go and run the test. It'll run the, uh, it'll add those tests to the thing and it will link it to a variable. Now in this case, it was able to find the proper variable uh, for each of the tests. Now it does this through either the store code matching or the exact name matching. So, you know, we got very lucky here. If this made the wrong decision, or it couldn't find a match, you can just go in here and use your variable browser. And in this case, you know, it made the right decision. So that works for me, Effluent Zinc. So now all I do is click Save and Close. And what it does is it puts that sample on the calendar. So here's uh, Effluent Metals. And you see all those tests are now listed to be run. OK. And if I go look out into the future, to the second Tuesday of December. There it is again. It assigns a unique sample number to it and it's scheduled. You never have to schedule it again. It's going to show up on your calendar. If you have the rights, you can reschedule it. You can say, you know what? This one I'm just scheduling. So I'm going to go ahead and put it uh, that I actually need to take the sample today. It says, do you want to reassign the sample number? I'll say yes. So it gives it a sample number that's year, year, month, month, day, day, and it's the second sample on that day. So here I go. I got my effluent metals. I'm right here. It does have a note now that I drag and dropped it so that you, you know you originally rescheduled it. When I reschedule a sample, it has no effect on the future schedule of that sample. The one in December is still scheduled on the second Tuesday 
of December. So now if I want to work on this sample, I simply just double click on it and it's going to bring up the information and allow me to start to take this through what we would call the work cycle. So I'm going to say, well, I took the sample, let's say I click this and it defaults to right now, but I actually took it at, let's say, 1.38 in the afternoon and it was sampled by, let's say, Brian Sharpnack. Okay. I can also say when it was received in the lab and who received it. So I could say Jan received it and he received it, um, we'll say at 0139. Brian's very fast. Okay. Now these this these are optional fields. The received in, the sampled by, and the sample date time need to be filled in. Okay. So now I go ahead and I'm just going to click Save Changes. And notice that that sample automatically changes colors. And it's marked now as received. Now if I double click on that sample, I can then further do more work on it. In this case, I'm going to increase the size of this form so we can see it. I'm going to go ahead and enter my results. Okay, So we'll say here my result was uh, less than... 0 0.002 and you can fill out additional information when did you start the uh, process I'm gonna say I started it right now at 339 and it finished at 339 and it was done it defaulted to to me Scott Dorner because I'm logged in as Scott Dorner and it assumed that since I'm entering the data I'm the person that analyzed it. You can override this obviously if you you want to I can also enter in a result comment lab Cal is great. And now I can go ahead and enter in the rest of my results if I want to. So I go to cadmium and let's say it's 0.123. I can go to chromium, it's 0.444. Uh, copper is less than 0 0.01. Lead is hopefully less than 0 0.001. Mercury is 0.213. And again, I'm just making these results up. And nickel is 0.111. Silver is 0 0.022. And my zinc is 0 0.021. Now, I can also take all this and right click and if I do ditto it just fills in the information and assumes you're doing this analysis all at the same time. So this is one way to enter the data in for the sample. Now again if I click Save Changes and Exit notice that that sample now becomes purple which means it's fully analyzed all results have been entered. I go back and get into WIMS now and I'm going to go in and I have, in under Data Manager, I have a data entry form called Effluent Metals. Actually, Metals. So I go ahead and open that, date, that form up. And notice the data shows up. And if I click on the cell, LabCal is great. The result comment is in there. So the data that you entered goes directly into WIMS. And conversely, if I want to go in here and say, you know what, that 0 0.4400 there, that's not right. It was 0 0.044. I can edit that number. That goes into my audit trail. Bring up right here so you see that it was entered and then it was edited. And now if I go back into LabCal and pull that up, notice the result is now changed 044. So they're writing to the same date, the same place, the same variable. It's just LabCal gives you another way to enter that data. As a matter of fact, you can enter that data completely through custom data entry or monthly data entry and it would show up here. You can also use it like I just did. Now the last step of LabCal is to come in here and then double click, say I want to close that sample out, probably want to set it to the time right now, and now I can click close sample which means I am done with that sample and it turns it gray. Now 
Once you have LabCal, the spread report generator will work with it. You'll be able to add that additional information, like when you write a report, you'll be able to say when it was analyzed, what method was used. All that kind of metadata can be brought out in a spread report. We also have ways to print your chain of custody and a certificate of analysis report for a sample. That's a brief introduction to LabCal. Thank you for your time.